So, I'm scouring through YouTube looking for a video to make a video about and I come across a video from Taboo Conspiracies 3 called Response to a Propagandist and Simon Dan is in the thumbnail. Now we all know that Simon Dan in the thumbnail plus in the title equals views. It's just simple maths. So I thought why not? So I got a few hundred more nasty comments from the Simon Dan cult yesterday. How Simon Dan's hired propaganda army works is beyond me, but it's certainly organized, but it doesn't really bother me. But it clearly does, because almost every time somebody makes a video about you, myself included, you make a response. And I for one think it's disgusting behaviour. I mean, who uses a bigger channel's name in their own title, description and thumbnail just because they think it's going to help them get views? <laughs> Maybe I'll try to address a few more of Simon Dan's arguments on the Globusters, if others think it's interesting, but I at least wanted to address a couple of Simon Dan's claims. Yes, all of his arguments were silly, but unlike Simon Dan, I don't get a penny for my videos. Yeah, but that's because your channels keep getting taken down for spreading misinformation, which is why you're now called Taboo Conspiracies 3. <laughs> I don't have any merchandise to sell. I have a career and a family to take care of, and so I don't have all day to make a video response to address all of his nonsense. Well, luckily for the normal people of the world, people like Dan and myself have been able to make this our full-time job or career, whatever you choose to call it. So we are here to counter your ridiculous misinformation videos. And you say you don't have time to sit around all day making videos, which is fine, we've all got to support our families, but you seem to have time to make videos claiming that the Apollo landings were faked, that we've never been to the moon, and that the Earth is flat. You've got time for those. So, let's start with this one. One other thing. Notice that there is no thrust from the nozzle. Yes, there should have been a huge flame and obvious light source from the nozzle. No, there shouldn't. Here is a short clip from the Vintage Space YouTube channel telling us why. Vintage Space, please don't say this is going to be some wrinkly old science professor lecturing us. But the lunar module didn't burn the same combination of fuel and oxidizer. Well, hello. I'm the Creaky Blind, and I just love science. Instead, it used hypergolic fuels, or hypergols. Hypergols burn on contact. They don't need an ignition source, which means all you have to do is open a valve, let the two mix, and boom, you're off. Which is great with spaceflight, because that's one less thing to worry about. Another characteristic of hypergols is that they typically burn clear. This is the case of the lunar module. Both the lunar module ascent stage and descent stage used a mix of aerosene 50 and dinitrogen tetroxide, a fuel and an oxidizer that burn on contact with a characteristic clear flame. And there you go. It's meant to have a clear flame, so obviously you're not going to see it. I do have to commend NASA for using a beautiful propagandist. It's a wonderful change from Simon Dan, and it strangely makes me want to conform. But I guess the truth is more important to me. But a propagandist is a person who disseminates propaganda, and propaganda is information of a biased or misleading nature used to promote a political cause or point of view. Which, if you think about it, Taboo Conspiracies 3, you could pretty much use as the description of your YouTube channel. Even though she's hot, she isn't telling you the truth. Ugly people can be dishonest as well. No, don't. Anyways, did you notice that she used the words clear flame? Now, it's interesting that you bring up words because I noticed that you used the word conform. Now, is that maybe a clue as to why you are so susceptible to believing in ridiculous theories like the Flat Earth and the Apollo landing being fake? Because I, for one, am struggling to see how the incoherent ramblings of an idiot can possibly outweigh the information provided by Amy, who holds a bachelor's degree and knows everything there is to know about the Apollo 11 missions, can even be compared to each other. Because whilst your preferred method of research is watching other YouTube videos from creators that believe exactly the same nonsense as you, Amy's preferred method of research is, well, actual research. For comparison purposes, this is a clear flame produced by burning alcohol. Is that burning alcohol in a cup on the moon so that it's a fair comparison? You can still see the flame, but it is rather invisible. 
So the question is whether the hypergolic fuel mixture of the Apollo 15 and Apollo 17 ascent stages would have burned clear and thus mostly invisible from the remote controlled camera on the moon operated 234,000 miles away. Well, I'm fairly sure that if we carry on going through Amy's video, we will soon get a really, really good explanation of why we couldn't see the flame coming from the lunar landing module. To her credit, she was right about the alleged fuel used by the Lunar Lander movie prop. It was an alleged mixture of dinitrogen, tetroxide, and aerosene 50. It sounds so impressive. But is the flame from the hypergolic propellant invisible, as she claimed? This video comes from the School of Chemistry at the University of Nottingham, where they recreated the chemical reaction that allowed astronauts to blast free from the moon's gravity. But what we must remember is they recreated this on Earth, in Earth's atmosphere. Now I'm sure you not mentioning that was just an oversight, so I'll let you continue. Once I take a quick break, obviously. Do you know, I really hope that stupid isn't contagious. This type of chemical reaction, a hypergolic chemical reaction, was the rocket fuel used in the Apollo program. And opening the switch. Impressive. Do I really have to point out the obvious here? Does anyone else see the problem? Their rocket was too small? Oh, it wasn't actually in space? Me. Oh, and me. It was the wrong color. Thank you, Simon Dan. You finally got an answer right. But I'm sure you're about to claim that the School of Chemistry at the University of Nottingham must have got NASA's method wrong. Well, fortunately, here's another professor in chemistry. So we call it dinitrogen tetroxide. Now we come to the part where we're actually going to put in the fuel. Dimethyl hydrazine, which is actually one of the key components of a mixture called Aerozine 50, which NASA have used uh, for a very long time to power some of their rockets. Because it gets very hot, it glows so brightly and produces a big brown plume. But my God, this is impressive. Just in case you missed it, let's hear that one more time. Because it gets very hot, it glows so brightly and produces a big brown plume. Both the lunar module ascent stage and descent stage used a mix of aerosene 50 and dinitrogen tetroxide, a fuel and an oxidizer that burn on contact with a characteristic clear flame. Clear flame. And produces a big brown plume. Clear flame think you need to get your eyes fixed or glasses because <laughs> you're lying through your teeth. How well does the Apollo footage match actual experimentation? Yes, there should have been a huge flame and obvious light source from the nozzle. No, there shouldn't. Who thinks Simon Dan is lying to you? Me. Thank you, Simon Dan. For the next argument, I'm just going to play Simon Dan's video. It's that bad. You can clearly see the use of 1960s movie artificial backdrops here. It's obvious. Is it? The backdrop lines are visible throughout all the missions. Are they? In this case, you can even see the carpet used to blend in with the backdrop. No reasonable person can deny that these are movie backdrops. This was not filmed on the moon. And your evidence for that is... I mean, apart from watching other videos of people saying exactly what you just did, because that's not evidence. I can't help the willfully blind, but I think any reasonable, decent human being can see that this is a poor 1960s movie backdrop, and no goofy propaganda sellout is going to change that fact. So the idea of the clear flame conspiracy is kind of an interesting one. Basically, it goes like this. And by the way, this is the section of Vintage Spaces video, which for some strange reason that will probably remain unknown, Taboo Conspiracies 3 decided not to watch for himself and include in his video about Simon Dan. <laughs>
<laughs> no, he didn't include it because it explains exactly why he is wrong. In the footage of Apollo lunar modules leaving the moon, the ascent stage is not seen burning a plume like we see a rocket does leaving the Earth. Therefore, the idea goes, if there's no plume, there is no real rocket, therefore we never really landed. It was just a model being raised off a simulated moon. Well, that's not true, and it has to do with the fuel that the lunar module burned. When you think about a rocket that's launching off the Earth with a huge plume of flame, you're thinking of something like the Saturn V, something that burned a mixture of kerosene and liquid oxygen to get off the ground. But the lunar module didn't burn the same combination of fuel and oxidizer. Instead, it used hypergolic fuels, or hypergols. Hypergols burn on contact, they don't need an ignition source. Which means all you have to do is open a valve, let the two mix, and boom, you're off. Which is great with spaceflight because that's one less thing to worry about. Another characteristic of hypergols is that they typically burn clear. This is the case of the lunar module. Both the lunar module ascent stage and descent stage used a mix of aerosene 50 and dinitrogen tetroxide, a fuel and an oxidizer that burn on contact with a characteristic clear flame. A clear flame that you've all seen before. This is the same fuel and oxidizer mixture that the Titan II used, the rocket that launched the Gemini program. And if you look back at that old launch footage, that rocket rises on an apparently clear flame and it looks awesome. Anyone else starting to see why Taboo Conspiracies may not have included this in his original video? Hmm? And there's another piece to why we don't see the flame of the ascent stage, though it is a secondary reason to the fuel mixture. On Earth, our atmospheric pressure means that we see the exhaust of a rocket as a column. It doesn't really spread out much because the pressure of the air keeps it contained. That's not the case on the Moon where there is no atmosphere. Anything that burns can dissipate far more easily, so even if we could see it, you wouldn't see it the same as you do on Earth. And I'll throw in the fact that the cameras weren't exactly high-definition TV cameras that showed it. So even if you could see a very tiny bit of the flame leaving the Moon, probably wouldn't see it on that not-so-great TV footage. I'll just wait for your response then, Taboo Conspiracies 3. Thanks for watching everybody, I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Tidy. Alright, alright, watch this next. But before you do, make sure you subscribe. By order of the creaky blind. <laughs>